In this video, I want to go through my top seven features in Power BI that you probably didn't know existed. I want to go through some of my favorites that changed the way that I use Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as you all know, Power BI has a lot of different features and the Power BI team has been really rigorous in updating and adding new features every month, which can be hard to keep track of, especially if you don't use Power BI very often. Even I'm still learning new features uh, as I use Power BI every day. So today I just want to show you some of my favorites that I found out from the community or just by playing around with Power BI that really helped me change the way that I use Power BI. So to some of you out there, these features you probably knew already, but for me, especially when I was first starting Power BI, I didn't know they existed. So the first one is the Format Painter. So let's say we have this report here and we have a card, we have a source name, which is a filter uh, button here. And we also have a bar chart, uh, just giving you uh, some charts here. And let's focus on this card here. This card you'll see it's got some customizations here. We added some shadows, some uh, change in text color, change in background color. Um, so we've sort of customized it to how we want it. Now, let's say we want to create new cards that uses the same formatting customizations. Now, if you know Power BI, if you create a new card here, and let's say we'll just add a new card here. So you'll see that it doesn't have the customization of this button. So it means that for us to get that, we'll either need to copy and paste this button or we'll need to go through the formatting options one by one to get the same formatting that we wanted. Now, I didn't know this before, but you have this format painter option on the top left hand side, which does this for you automatically. So all you need to do is click on the visual that you want to copy from. Then you click the format painter. This will change your icon to a paintbrush. Next is to click the visual that you want to copy the formatting options to. So we click on this new one that we've created and there you go. So it copies all of the settings that you have from this uh, first card into this new one that we've created. So you don't have to redo all of the formatting things that you have done already before, which really saves you a lot of time, especially if you make a lot of visual changes to your visuals. So I demoed how it works with cards, but this also works with other visuals like let's say bar charts or line charts and pretty much other visualizations that you can find in Power BI Desktop. Another feature that you probably ignored, I know I did when I used Power BI a long time ago, were themes. Now you can find this under view and you'll see here we have a list of themes that you can use, which allows you to apply themes to your Power BI report. Um, I don't use this quite a lot because I like uh, customizing my colors as they come into the report. So I didn't use themes before because I thought you only uh, had the options to kind of select the different themes from here. But did you know that you can create and customize themes to make your life a lot easier? So if you click the down arrow down here, you will have uh, first the ability to choose more uh, themes for your Power BI report. You can browse themes that is available in the themes gallery or online, or you can create a custom theme. So you can customize the current theme that you have right now. So if you click that, it will open up a window that allows you to customize uh, things like colors or other things in your Power BI report. So here you can see you can name your theme, you can change the theme colors um, so that when you create, let's say a bar chart or a pie chart, it will automatically uh, default to these colors. If you have, let's say, rag statuses, it will use these and you can change these as you want. And it's not just tied to colors. So you can change other things in your theme, which makes this really, really powerful. So if you go to advanced, you can change other things here, like the elements of your visuals. You can 
even customize things like uh, uh, font text, font size, font colors, and you can have settings or themes to certain elements in your report. So visuals, KPIs, uh, so many things that you can kind of play around here and customize so that when you create and add new elements to your Power BI reports, it uses the theme that you've set here, making it slightly faster for you to create new reports using the themes that you want to use without having to redo all of them one by one again. What's even better is that you can export these themes. So here, for example, we customized that theme that we had before. Um, I just added a name to it. So if I go back to this page here, I just said this is now my theme and I hit apply um, but now if you go down again here in this option you'll have the option to save the current theme so here you can save a json file which you can use and import to other power bi reports so it means um, your work here in your reports is not lost when it comes to the themes you can reuse them to other reports to make sure that they are using the same themes that uh, you have for this report, making it uh, easy to kind of sync up your themes as you use them. The next one is more towards cleaning up and streamlining your user experience. So when your users use your reports and when you hover over reports like this one, for example, the bar chart, you'll see a menu popping up on the top right hand side, uh, which gives you options like uh, to see what filters are being applied to your reports, uh, to focus it, which just puts it uh, in uh, maximize view and some other options here like exporting data, showing us table, things like this. However, did you know that you can disable this view so your viewers won't be able to see these options? So you can disable it from the format pane. So to do that, you go to the visual itself. Under visualizations, you go to the format pane. And at the very bottom of this, you will see an option called visual header. Now, if you just toggle this, this will turn off the option to see the um, visual header. Um, that, that's it, period. So you will still see it when you hover over in Power BI Desktop. Uh, that's because this is sort of where you build it and you might still need that. However, if you publish this into the service and share it to other people, uh, they won't see this pop up. Uh, show up. So if we go back quickly to that um, option there on the format pane, so if we just re-enable that, you'll see um, in the collapse menu here, you'll see you'll have so many other options for you to enable and disable so you can customize further. Um, let's say if you have uh, the option to go more options, you can disable things like uh, pinning it to a dashboard or giving a, a, an option to go focus mode. Uh, so lots of customization options that I didn't realize that was available for me uh, until just recently. So there you go. The next one is the navigator menu. Uh, it's a new feature that came out uh, recently in the November 2021 update, and it basically simplifies creating menu buttons for you and for your report. So gone are the days where you have to create individual reports uh, of each page. You have to create these separate buttons and then managing them. Let's say, um, you know, if you have 20 pages, you have to create 20 buttons across the 20 different pages. Um, and if you have to delete or edit a page, you have to manage all of them individually. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just have a page navigator that just works automatically for you. And it's really, really easy to implement as well. So you'll find the page navigator under the insert ribbon, under buttons, navigator, page navigator. So here is what the page navigator looks like. So it creates a set of menu buttons for you and it does a couple of things automatically. So first it adds uh, some dynamic elements to your report. So when you hover or when you click, it adds some dynamic elements there. It detects and auto syncs to your pages. So you'll see we have two pages here. It knows that you have two pages. So it's created two buttons here and it detects what page you're on. And also it automatically links your pages together. So um, we have the summary page button here. And if you click that, uh, it just takes you to that page without you having to customize it. So really, really easy to implement. And I mean, it's really amazing feature. And actually I covered it recently in a previous video. Uh, I covered it in detail on how to use it and how to customize it and how it sort of looked like before. Uh, the page navigator existed, so how you manage it manually. So if you're in, interested in how to see and how to implement it uh, step by step, 
I covered it in that video, so go check it out if you haven't yet. So the next one is cross-filtering. So let's say we have a report here and you want this filter, this drop-down filter here, to work on one visual, to filter a visual but not the other. So here, for example, um, if you click, uh, let's say, one of these sources, um, it affects everything in this report page. So we just delete these ones to not get it confused. But let's say we want to change that um, interaction. So we want the source name drop down menu. So if we click one of these, it won't affect the card. So we, we still want to show this card number as it is. Um, we just want it to affect the bar chart down here. So how do we do that? So we can customize it by editing the interactions for the visuals. Now, you won't find it in the ribbon here until you've selected a visual in your report. So we'll click this one, for example, and you'll see the, uh, you have a new, two new options here, Format and Data Drill. So we we'll just go to the Format uh, ribbon up here, and you'll see an option here called Edit Interactions. That enables you to toggle the interactions or how the interactions are happening between the visuals in your reports. So at the moment we have the source name, the drop down filter selected. Uh, and you'll see because we have this selected, it shows on the other visuals. So you see on the top right, it's kind of highlighted what it's affecting and what it's doing. So you'll see for all of these uh, visuals, so these two, you'll see on the top right hand side, you will see that it gets filtered. So when we make any changes in this filter, it will uh, filter these two visuals. Now, for example, if you want to uh, have it so that this drop down menu doesn't affect this visual, all you have to do is just select none here. And there you go. So that's really it. So here you go. So now if even if you select a couple of different sources here, it won't change or it won't affect this visual and uh, just the bar charts down there, which uh, is a handy way to kind of control the storytelling in your report. And if you're wondering how to disable that, you just kind of go back to the format option and deselect the edit interactions and you will not have those options anymore. Another feature that I found recently is the new mobile layout. Now, did you know that you can access and use Power BI reports in your mobile phone? Uh, I knew that before and in that capacity before I used to view huge Power BI reports in this layout, the landscape format in a uh, small screen, which as you can tell, can be a little bit difficult. Uh, they used to have, or, or there is a feature available where you can create a dashboard which allows you to see uh, your reports in a mobile view. So this feature is not the dashboard version of your report, but actually a working version of your report, but sort of formatted in a small screen and you're able to kind of customize and edit it as you like. So you'll find this mobile layout feature under view. So here you will have mobile layout. And here it gives you a preview of how your reports will look like in a mobile page. So you'll see instead of a landscape, it shows you obviously a mobile screen here. On the right hand side, you will see the visuals that you have in your page. And from here, you can simply just drag and drop. And you'll see that you have a lot more uh, flexibility when it comes to kind of formatting your visuals. So this allows you to kind of drag and drop and really customize the storytelling and how your users view your reports in a small screen like a mobile phone. So yeah, so this is there and you can customize them in Power BI Desktop if you needed to. So this last one is really, really cool. Did you know that you can add emojis and special characters to any text entries in Power BI? So we're gonna use a simple example here. So we're gonna add a text box here and we're just gonna type something else. So let's say this is a text box. And any time you're writing uh, something like this, like a free text, so you simply click Windows dots and that opens up the emoji board for you. So you're able to insert emojis, symbols uh, in your text box without needing to worry about much. So let's say we'll just want to add a thumbs up here. So we'll just click that. And there you go, it inserts it to your text box that easily. Now, it sounds 
quite trivial <laughs> and it I mean it is in the grand scheme of things um, it adds a sort of wow factor to your reports when you build them so instead of just having text and you know having some numbers in there you can add some spiced elements like colorful elements like emojis to make it a little bit more interesting so I've actually used this in the past to show things like a number going positive or negative or if you want to show a thumbs up and down for good or bad things or for things like uh, showing stars, number of stars for ratings. Um, your imagination is really the limit for this one. I even covered how to use this in another video where you uh, create a custom KPI using just the basic visual elements in Power BI. And I use heavily the symbols from the emoji board. So if you're interested in seeing how it works in action, go check out that video. And that's really it for this video. As I said, some of you might know already some of these features, so it might sound so basic to you. But for those of you out there who didn't know, I hope this will help you change how you use Power BI and hopefully for the better. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.